You are now tuned in to the Windy City Benders Podcast. This is WCVP. All right, it's another edition of the WCV Podcast. It's Jerem, it's Tanner. What's up, bud? <laughs> not much, man. Just uh, oh, having a good time, having a good time. I had to stretch uh, out that pause, and well, not much to talk about. This is like yeah, very last like episode of... Fill in, this, fill in the dead air with, with shit. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Talk All there is, is is signings. No exciting things. And it's not even like anything Hawks related. No. um, Literally, my list for Hawks, Hawks talk is empty. Uh, The only thing that just hit me that I remember was um something Puck Report put out there, I think, last weekend that... um. Bill Wirt, no, Wirtz. What's wow? Why am I blanking on Wirtz's kid's name? Rock. Oh wait, yeah, Rocky. Danny. Danny. Danny Wirtz, right? Yeah. What? Um, it's Bill, Rocky, Danny. Danny. Okay, I don't know why I just blanked out <laughs> to Danny. Well, yeah, because then you said Bill, and I was like, yeah. hey, Rocky. Yeah. <laughs> Danny Wirtz came out and said, like, he quadrupled down that the Blackhawks have no intention of changing their logo. That oh, yeah. they want to continue to use it to educate and to make good with the the native community and and help get their story and their history and, and all that out there. And it's not gonna be enough for people to hear that, but you know what? I'm glad he came out and he's saying, not just saying, hey, we're not changing the logo. He's saying, hey, we're not changing the logo because dot 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 which has been, I think, the difference make in the, in the past. And I, hopefully that starts making things a little bit easier for people to accept the fact that the logo's here to stay. Yeah, and I think that, I mean, they really came out and said that because, what was it, the Portland Winterhawks just recently yeah. updated their logo and jerseys. And they used to have the Indian head logo on their jerseys too. I mean, and now it's like a, a hawk with like a mountain and stuff like in the neck area. I mean, their jerseys are sick. They're new ones. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen them. Yeah, no, they're really nice. (laughs) Yeah, and they have, like, they kind of, like, took the Seattle Kraken, like, theme for the colors and the the jersey. But but that one makes made sense to change. That has, like, nothing to do with what the logo was. That was just playing off of the Hawks. Right, which is kind of weird. Yeah, but. But Like, I don't know. It's the Blackhawks and then the Winter Hawks, and they were like, yeah, we can use that logo. (laughs) We can use the logo. Um. But yeah, there's really, I mean, other than that, not much to talk about with the Hawks. I don't think anything's expected. The team's pretty much set. Um, yeah. All RFAs are signed, um, all those kind of stuff. Maybe eventually they add some players, you know, to take on contracts and all that kind of stuff, but that's not going to be till trade deadline time. So it's going to be very boring to talk about, like behind the scenes stuff for the Hawks, I think, for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll 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 do a quick transition then. I th- I think it was just the only other thing that came out was just more word from Kyle Davidson that Patty Kane and Jonathan Taves have not requested a trade. Oh yeah, Keen Watch 2022 update four. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. No trade has been requested still. Patrick Kane goes to the airport to go to BioSteel camp and every, the whole world's burning down. Patrick Kane is literally on video for Fifth Third and their Instagram story at Fifth Third practicing in his Blackhawk jersey and nobody bats an eye and says a thing. Kane is a yeah. Chicago Blackhawk until, I'd say probably till February, maybe even January. Actually, um, some Hawks news. Ooh. They released the national... TV broadcast schedule. Oh, yeah. Or not schedule, but like um games by team. And the Hawks have 14 nationally broadcasted games, which I think is hilarious. Why the not f- gonna be good? <laughs> and they have double the amount of games as Florida, who just did Cup they cont- they won the presidents last year, right? The yeah. presidents, yeah. I yeah. mean, and face it, they're a cup contender still. Like they are still one of the Montreal teams. has zero nationally broadcasted games. I didn't even All see Canada's got like Canada just got screwed. Yeah. I mean, they probably have a lot of games on TSN, but it's true. It's not going to be like all over ESPN and ABC. But what is it between Ottawa, Montreal, Vancouver, Winnipeg? 
there's like five total games, or it's like over. Ottawa like has five. one, Winnipeg has one, Vancouver has two, Montreal has zero. The Leafs have eleven. Well, that makes sense. Um, Oilers have fourteen. My, I, I feel like I'm missing one. Calgary. Oh yeah, Calgary's got four. But yeah, we have the same amount of nationally broadcasted games as Colorado. The most is weird. It's Minnesota and uh, Pittsburgh and the Rangers at 15. I would love to know how many of those games are against Colorado, too, for the Hawks. Because you know the first one is because it's the banner-raising night for Colorado. Mm -hmm. So that'll be one. Funny. It's not going to be good, and it's going to be really annoying, like sad to watch. Arizona's only got four. Come on. You know what's going to be funny is that, you know, before people would complain on Twitter and like social media about how the Blackhawks are always on national TV and all oh, they're so good, blah, 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 kind of thing. Now it's like, oh my God, now they're just rubbing in our face that they're tanking for Bedard. Like, <laughs> it's fine with me. No matter what, people are going to be complaining about Blackhawks being on national TV. And I kind of love it. I really do. Yeah. You know, just always on the minds of everybody. Yeah, I love it. Uh, so kind of associated with Hawks talk and transitioning over to NHL talk. Uh, there's some contracts yeah. contracts that have been signed. Uh, one that we've been talking about. Uh, Tanner was hoping for another RFA uh, offer sheet out there. Was not meant to be. Uh, nope. Kirby Doc signs his extension with Montreal. It was four years at what was it? Three point three point three six two five. Now I had somebody ask me, is this a good was that a good deal for Kirby or is it a overpay? And I think it's one of those too too early to tell. Yeah. I mean, if he plays up to like his draft position, that's gonna be a, a fantastic deal. If he continues just kind of what was going on in Chicago, then it's gonna be an overpay and the Hawks win likely win the trade just straight up. Here, so here's my question. I kind of was thinking about this today too, about that when you said um, if he plays up to his draft position, is it possible that he was over, like, overvalued? There's a reach. Like There's a, a reach. huge reach, and maybe he gets to a level where he's showing improvement, but it still doesn't reach third overall pick potential, and people are always going to consider him a bust, even though he. You could potentially have a great career if, say, he was drafted later in the top 10 or maybe, like, top 15. Yeah, I like, mean... Is, this, is he just set up to be a bust? Went, like, if he went, like, 7, 8, or 9 and is where he has at currently, like, I don't think anybody is saying anything about him being a bust. Yeah. But because one of the reasons for that, too, is just, like, when he was drafted... Like that wasn't anybody on anybody's mind. It was between like I think Turcotte and like Byram, um, Dylan Cousins, like those those were like the three guys I think that everybody was like, it's gonna be one of them, one of them, one of them. And then they announced the, the pick and everybody was like, Huh, that was a surprise. And yeah. like what sucks too is like after that. Like Moritz Sider was number six, and every and then that's what stole the show, really, because everybody's like, "Wow, what a terrible pick!" And then it's like, "I wish we would have had that kind of like surprise." <laughs> yeah, um, and then I think that just shows you again the difference between a great GM and a mediocre GM, Stevie Y versus a Bowman. But yeah. I mean. So it's like, is it just to this point where this kid just needs to to have him enjoy his career, get paid what he can get paid and all this, because no one's ever going to give him the t the credit he deserves because yeah. he's always going to have that top three. I think he's going to a, into a tougher market too. Like Chicago, like we're kind of on the downswing. Like if he was playing poorly and we were playing really well as a team, I think he would get a lot more shit. Yeah. But the team wasn't good. Like, he wasn't playing super great, but he had, like, spurts of, like, looking really good. And I think just Montreal, like, they're psychopaths. So, I don't know. It could end up, like, not being great if he doesn't play well. 
but the other thing too is like he's not going to be seen as like the next up and coming like guy on their team like they have Cole Caulfield they have Nick Suzuki um which is help out big time. yeah like they have a lot of they have other young guys that they're going to be looking forward to and like Suzuki's going to be the guy that they're looking at as the one C where like Kirby Doc was like hey that's our next one C yeah and it's like this doesn't look like it's turning out that way right now it looks like he's going to be more of a defensive kind of centerman but I mean, could be could be good for him, but uh, like I said, like if he doesn't perform up to like the standards of Montreal, even though the team's not going to be like super great, like I don't know, could suck. Yeah, I mean, I I'm super excited to see what happens though with Montreal, um, especially with him being with St. Louis. Um, coaching because yeah. you saw like the little time that he had with Caulfield and what he did. He had a different type of player and all that, but still, you put that offensive mind into to a kid that he. Let's face it, he had no confidence in the offensive game. He was pretty much you know snake bit in every time. All of his goals were like just lucky bounces and all that type of thing. He just no matter what he tried to do, he, he couldn't pull it off. He he would over deke over dangle himself and all that kind of stuff. So getting a guy like St. Louis to kind of like hone that in for him would be just fantastic. Uh, the other big signing, well, I mean, not the other big signing, the big signing that happened that was announced today that kind of, I think came out of nowhere uh, was Ottawa. Tim, yeah. uh, Tim Stutzla. 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 I, just, I don't know. Stutzla, eight years, Stutzla. eight year, uh, what was it? 8.35. Yeah. Wow. Eight years, 8.35. It's crazy. Well, you know what's weird is that it's all – there's none like – there's no, like, signing bonus any of those years. He also has a, a no mod- – like, 10-team no-trade list in the final four years of it. He's only 20. It doesn't kick in until after next season. Next year. So they have him locked up right now for nine years, which, I mean, is insane. He had a great year last year, 22 goals, 36 to 6, 58 points in 79 games. Like, minus 27, but the team wasn't great defensively. And now he's going to be playing likely on a line with DeBrinket and Giroux. Oh, God. That's going to be so Ottawa crazy. is going to be. This looks like such an overpay right now, but, like, if he puts up – if he is close to, like, a point per game on this upcoming season, it's going to – be similar to like when like dry style got signed for that like 8.35 like if this kid just keeps getting better and better like there's a reason he was drafted like third overall that year he's pretty pretty awesome (laughs) it's kind of funny like we're talking about this contract after last week we were talking about uh the thompson contract Uh, we're like making fun of buffalo for you know putting that much into a to a player but and it's kind of the same situation. He's had one good year. I mean, he's a solid player. He's got one good year in his bank. But at the end of the day, like you said, he is only 20 years old. Mm-hmm. He's he, going to be playing. He had a good rookie season, too. Yeah. I mean, he is going to be sick. Um, And the cool, like, the really interesting thing, like, this Ottawa team, I think, is becoming so interesting at how they're being built. Like, they have the Chicago Blackhawks effect. Like, their owner passes. Mm-hmm. New people come in. They they flip the narrative. They start spending money. They start investing in players and all that. And while we haven't seen it on the ice yet, like I mean, it's fucking great what they've done so far. Yeah. And then on top of that, you have your core locked down for the next five plus years. Yeah, it's just curious to know what's going to happen with DeBrinket because he hasn't signed yet. And we've talked about before, but his qualifying offer for his because he's an RFA is nine point five. So. They either got to, like, come up with a deal for under 9.5 that he agrees to, which I well, I don't know, like, why you would do that. You're an all-star. You're a 40-plus goal scorer. Like, you're going to be really goddamn good. Or they qualify him for 9.5. They lock up eight forwards at around $50 million for next year. So you still got to – like – I don't know. Let's say the cap goes up like to eighty-five million, maybe. 
you have 35 million to sign i don't know what's like four more defensemen are you talking and, about next year the cap go like, yeah after the season okay yeah and then you don't have cam talbot like there's you have 35 million to kind of sign four forwards four defensemen and likely a starting goalie or a bet or like a 1b goalie and i don't know if that's going to be like a ton of a ton of to like work with so they also don't even have alex formanton signed currently too who was another one of their draft picks who had like an i'm pretty sure he had a decent season last year maybe not 32 points in 79 games so we're talking about like why would he take like less money do you think they can put pitch him if this team is really competitive this year like I, I don't think they're ready to make that jump where they're like, okay, they're they're a threat. I think they make the jump where they can contend for a playoff spot. They might miss it, but they're right there. Do you think they could be like, hey, Cat's going up a little bit next year. Work with us on this deal. The following season's when it's expected to go up a lot. We take care of you right away. Is that something that you think a player would be interested in, or do you I don't know? I feel the... like I feel like he would pref- like if I was a player, I would prefer like a long term yeah. deal. Yeah, and it, like you said, like if it, if the cap does go up significantly, like the is it next year or the year after? It it's supposed to be like after the next season, after the twenty three twenty four season. I I think honestly, like, it's probably a better idea to lock him up, suffer for a season where you might not have the depth because of the cap being lower but then once it goes up significantly you take that off season you fill in when you already have like you mentioned like your core you would have Brady Kachuk Josh Norris you have Claude Giroux until the end of 2025 you have Drake Batherson uh Matthew Joseph Tim Stutzla like in three years you have six forwards signed and then if you block to break it up that'd be seven yeah I, I mean that's not too bad. You just don't really have any defense besides Thomas Shabbat locked up there. I don't know. I feel like they probably want to like, I know Ottawa fans want Jake Chikrin. Yeah. I just, I think that they're the asking price for him is just too much still, but I mean, you want, okay. A, a, I, I think he's right. A right-handed defenseman. You just said Thomas Shabbat and Jake Chikrin. As like your top two, it's kind of, and you had them locked up, be pretty sick. Uh, cat friendly has chicken in his left and right knee. What handedness is he? Uh, he is left. Oh, so he would be a lefty as well as Shabbat. But either way, it's still like two pretty goddamn good defensemen that you'd have. So do you? So here's the other thing. Then do you go in on chicken? Eat some of Debrinket's cap this year at the deadline. Get some prospects coming in, picks and all that. Move him to another team. So then it's like you're really you didn't give up much. Let's face it, you didn't give up much for him. Flip him for better. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't do that. I just wouldn't because like him being an RFA, just kind of like if he doesn't want to sign. Or if you just do like his qualifying offer at one year at 9.5, like that doesn't really kill you as much. And then maybe if any team wanted to offer sheet him, that's like over 10 million. It's like two, three plus first round picks, which I don't think anybody would do. Because teams are scared about that. Everybody <laughs> unless, first round unless, Yeah, unless you're like a team that's like clearly in the hunt, like Vegas, but I don't even they wouldn't even have the cap for that, right? Like you couldn't have like Eichel at ten million, like like Ryan or Mark Stone at like nine point five, and then like Debrink at like ten million. Like they don't even have a goalie. Yeah, I don't they, know how don't. like Vegas people. I don't know how Vegas. They still think Vegas is going to be in the hunt when they don't even have a fucking goalie. I don't know, man. That is such really a shit funny. show organization right now. But yeah. If they were to move them, and I hate even putting this out in the universe, uh, Stevie, why? It doesn't – well, unless it was, like, an off-season thing, like, after the – like, and he's an unsigned RFA, it, 
Stevie Y is really good at picking up guys that are unsigned RFAs. <laughs> it just fights and it, it's it's the weirdest thing when he trades for them, like Billy Huso, or not Billy Huso, but uh, Alex Nadelkovich, where he traded like a second or a third or something like that for him. Right they, now, was, they only have. I mean, they have just over eight million projected cap space. Uh, mm -hmm. next year they have to worry about Larkin, uh, Bertuzzi, uh, P. Suter, uh, Sundquist. Uh, Adam er 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 Ernie, Ernie. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, um, those are guys that like. If you lose them, like, is it that bad? Mata, like Tyler Batuzzi and Walton. Dylan Larkin, you probably want to keep on, like, on the team. Well, but like, yeah, but putting that out there, it's like this is a team that can afford him, and Debrinket yeah. is from from Michigan. Yeah, and as much as I hate to say it, it would be kind of sick to see Detroit come back to their glory. On the backs of two homegrown kids, like home kids in Larkin and Debrinket. That would be sick. Yeah. Their projected cap space is like just under 41.5 million next year. That's fucking nuts. I'm sure they can they can make it work. I mean, you know, I think it kind of depends too on like how well maybe Detroit does this season. Like if they're knocking on the door of being like in the playoffs and maybe they do make an off season move like that, because if you are going to try and make the playoffs of the year after, like having trading a future first round pick for Debrinket and maybe a prospect. And then you can lock them up because like, I don't know, unless you do like a sign and trade, which happened for the first time ever, <laughs> but yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Already um, looking forward to next offseason. <laughs> yeah, right. Let's like put themselves in that kind of place. Also, like Ottawa did sign Eric Brandstrom to a one year, $900,000 deal. He was uh, one of the pieces that like was supposed to be a good offensive defenseman that was uh, in the trade for Mark Stone from Vegas. He was one of Vegas's first like three first round picks. Oh, I yeah. guess it's kind of like a prove it like deal. Let's see. Oh. He... Yeah, in 116 NHL games, he's got two goals, 29 assists, 31 points. Yeah, he was drafted 15th overall in 2017. I think they were probably expecting a little more out of that in that trade, but. Who knows, I, man? I too. Sometimes, like, that's the thing. Sometimes, like, defensemen take a little bit longer than forwards. That's that the thing, is. yeah. Like, we've talked about that before. Forwards are, the like, the one position I feel if you're a top pick, you could probably jump into the league right away. Defensemen, you probably need up to, like, three years maybe at the earliest to make that jump. And yeah, also, these. if you're, like, if you're measured at 5'10", yeah. Like you're not a big guy, you're gonna have and and what is he? He's 23 now. So like for the past few years, you're still trying to bulk up and you're going like you're likely playing in front or going in corners with guys like I don't know, he's in he's in Ottawa. So like like Zach Cassian coming down into the corner or in front of the net with you. Like yeah. You're just like, what are you gonna fucking do, man? Like <laughs> well, take it, go. I, I, well, I might like, get in way Ottawa this. Ottawa hasn't really been that great of a defensive team. And like they've been on the losing side a lot. So like if you're a guy that's that's more offensive minded and your team's not generating a lot of offense, it's not gonna look great for you. Right. So yeah. Um the other one that we haven't really mentioned, which happened like I think like after we recorded last week, JT Miller. Oh yeah. He signed the seven year deal for eight million dollars, which is I think hilarious just because he's one of the guys that's everybody's been like if like, where's JT Miller gonna go? Where's Patty Kane gonna go? Where like <laughs> and and then all of a sudden Vancouver's just like, no, we're just gonna keep him. <laughs> He's on the trade block, like at the trade deadline, and we're gonna keep him. How do you how do you feel about this trade? Like or let's pay or not pay trade, the, the signing. I mean, you think good good move by them, overpay. Yeah. I mean, he I think he's a great player. He's a he's such a good all around player, and he was just a point shy of a of a hundred last year. It's like, sure, you can probably get a lot for him, but I don't think that 
Vancouver is in like rebuild, retool. Like I think they wanted to like be better. Yeah. And they wanted to keep what they have. Like I think what was it? Elias Patterson didn't have hasn't played like super hot. I guess he had a decent season last year. 68 in 80. Yeah, was it the year before? It was kind of like a drop off for him. I mean, that's um, still kind of a drop off. Twenty one and twenty six, but he like two in 2019, 2020, he had sixty six and sixty eight, which was like just shy of a point per game. I he's still a good player. I just think maybe there was a lot less talk about them. Like the, Vancouver had a lot of issues during the COVID years. You know, like oh, yeah. they had a bunch of games in a row that like they had to get postponed, and they were just they've been kind of screwed lately. They also got that Andre Kuzmenko guy. Um, this offseason, who I think is like a, supposed to be a really good Russian player, he had 53 points in 45 games in the K eight or in the KHL last year. So I think they're they want they're, I'm sure they get they want to like to be a lot better than last. I, I think what was it last season they just missed the playoffs too, and it was like they were right behind Vegas maybe. I mean that Pacific Division was 90, 92 points. Vegas had ninety four. Yeah, they just missed the they just missed the playoffs, and I and they were still kind of suffering a bit. Plus, like Thatcher Demko is gonna should be a lot better this year too. Like he's been just improving. I think. Let's see, last year two seven two and a nine one five. Sixty four games though, like that's his first like full season as the starter. Yeah, not too not too bad. So maybe maybe we see a Vancouver on the upswing a bit. God, that fucking OEL picking up that contract hurts. Yeah. Well, Tyler Myers at six million too. That's that's not great. He's still got five seasons of, of OEL. I think they want to get rid of Connor Garland too. I guess I don't think he had a great season with them last year. They gotta figure something out because now they're captain Bo Holvert. Needs a contract and they're Hol- kind of Hol- Horvat. Horvat. Yeah. <laughs> what did I say? Hovert. Hovert. <laughs> but Hovert. Um, but no, like he needs a contract too. And now they're kind of saying that it's like, is he just now is he gonna be a casualty and he's gonna be gone? Like it was... I mean, if they're not in the playoffs, like I can see that Vancouver's a bit oh, I feel like they've been a team that's never afraid to move like any kind of stars. Like they got Bo Horvat because they traded Corey Schneider when he was like at probably the peak the of peak. his game. Yeah. It was just it just straight up literally like first like eighth overall for Corey Schneider turned into Bo Horvat. And they traded Luongo. Like they've traded like guys like like big names and like, except for like the Sedines, they've traded like pretty big names on their team. Like they're not afraid to move people, yeah. even if it's their captain or not. There were just like, a lot I, of people, a lot of people that cover the Vancouver Canucks too were kind of surprised because they kept hearing that he was closer to a deal than JT Miller. Yeah. And now all well, of a that's sudden, the thing. Like now you would probably like do you do you compare the two? Like Bo Horvat's more of like a two way, like I don't think he doesn't put up like a ton of points, but he's still a good player, isn't he? Like 52 points in 70 games last year. He was a plus player at plus three. He's that he is that Taves type player where yeah. what he brings to the team it doesn't always he's good for up. around 50 to 60 points. Like and he's your I mean, I don't know if he's your number one center. I think maybe he's him and Elias Pedersen are like one A and one B. But I don't know. Maybe if he, he doesn't have anything kind of lined up, maybe he is somebody that they trade at the deadline. Man, I just don't pay attention to Vancouver. <laughs> Oh yeah, they oh they signed Ilya Mikheyev too. It's off season. Chris Lazar, who else? Yeah, I uh, we'll see what they got, man. But that's a pretty big deal after a lot of people speculating that he was going to be traded for the last like month, like five six months. Yeah, it, it was the it was The whole thing was not when if or no or, or not if when he's going to get traded kind of thing. Yeah. More than the question was, was yeah, like, where is he going? It's like the the Debrinket verbiage. It was just like when is that going to happen? And then now it was like him and Kane were like the big like oh who's going to get these guys? Who's going to make the move? If you can't get Kane or you could probably get JT Miller for a little bit cheaper and it's just like hey, he's locked up now. No, Plus, Kane just signed an eight-year. I was just in. about to say the, the <laughs> shock of the offseason is going to be Kane signs an eight-year deal. Yeah. Oh God, that'd be great. 
Eight years, seven million. Let's go. I mean, just to sell tickets, you can't to stay here forever. Gotta, gotta do something. Uh, the other thing that I have here too is we saw the fir- we got our first glimpse at jersey ads. Oh yeah. Um, at the rookie showcase. Uh, what was that for? Like, that wasn't like Arizona. for any specific. Arizona, uh, Vancouver, not Vancouver, Washington, Washington, Vegas. Um, yeah, I don't remember all of them, but it's so. In my opinion, they're still bad. I don't like it. I wish they right. weren't doing it. I think Coyotes did the best because it wasn't that big. What's nice about them is they're able to blend them in with the jersey. Like yeah, the patches not... themselves are the same color as the jersey. Yeah, so it kind of helps. There was one, I don't know who it was, but I'm just like, this is way too big. Um, was it Boston, maybe? I honestly do not know. But anyway, <laughs> so those are coming. And then there was a video of Reichel on the ice doing they were doing like a shootout, and they had players like giving like a judge score, like the dunk competition type kind of thing. And I did notice that the Hawks jersey didn't have an ad on it yet. I know that's not going to stay that way, but it was nice to see the Hawks jersey still with no ad while all these other jerseys had them on there. So at the end of the day, what does it matter? Like, I don't, I don't understand why you would agree to do that. Like, why would you spend so much money and have your jersey, your ad on a jersey when realistically, who's going to see it? Yeah, it's so the ones that I finally found it. It's Pittsburgh, Washington, Arizona, Vegas, and then Minnesota that have the ads on the jerseys right now. If it was Pittsburgh, it was huge. Um, maybe no, Pittsburgh isn't. They're not like terrible. I think the worst is probably Minnesota's because like the color of the ad, it's Tria, and then it has oh, like yeah. A, like a really light green and light blue like square it w- where the other ones kind of blend into the jerseys and it this also one kind of stands out a lot <laughs> and they're kind of confirming that vegas is going with that gold jersey as their new home jersey too Ugh. which is terrible <laughs> Woof. I, I mean just too much but you know vegas is is a whole other beast with just too much <laughs> Yeah. Uh so there's that. Um do you got any other news really? Uh you know, I don't. <laughs> so I had a feeling this was gonna happen today. So I put the back all out there on Instagram and very social medias for some questions. Um we got a couple in here, um, a couple of people we know, a couple anonymous ones. Um, so let's start with one that we kind of, because you mentioned his name earlier. This came from Washed Up Goalie, who is the host of the Tendy Talk podcast, which Tanner was on last yeah. year. Uh, he goes, should the Hawks sign P.K. Subban to a one-year deal? No. <laughs> uh, I Great, don't think so. To the point. Like, I don't, I don't There's think There's no value it does to it. Anything. It doesn't yeah. do anything, yeah. You know, like, kind of want to get rid of guys that are, uh, I mean, I don't know. See all, uh, all the you know, guys you brought in, like maybe, like you get you get PK eighty eight and PK whatever his number is now. PK seventy six. <laughs> seventy six, yeah. But like, what would you? What would he sign for? You it know? has to be league minimum, no. One a million league league? min? No way. I don't think PK Subban signed for like a league min after just making nine mil. There's Plus no he put, he put up two, 22 points in 77 games last year. The problem like, I have with him and like bringing him in is I, he has no value I think as a trade as a trade piece. I think I'm Jack sure. Johnson has value because he's he's won last year, he's had an extremely cheap contact contract. Domini yeah. and to see you cheap if, or not cheap, If it me, was like PK Subban at like 2 mil and you're right Side is Seth Jones, Jake McCabe, and PK Subban. Subban, Subban. And the left side is Caleb Jones, Jack Johnson, and Riley Stillman. And who the losing who? games, man? <laughs> the losing games. That's true. We already had one Subban. Why not get another? Yeah, hopefully we get this one, then we get something just, in future considerations. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I mean, I think that the whole reason, like, like Subban like, wasn't moved at all from Jersey was just because of that contract, you know? Like, I don't know. Like, I wouldn't hate it because do whatever. If the team's not going to be good. <laughs> Getting P.K. Subban is not going to make the Hawks good. Um, yeah, Like, cool. Go for it. For a pure tank reason, sign him. Yeah, like, why not? Like, you can, if he plays well enough and we get picks out of it, great. You know, like, if he has a good season and we are able to trade him at the deadline for, like, anything, awesome. That's great. He comes here, guess what? He gets ice time. Yeah. I think that's, like, that's one of those things that even if he does sign for, like, three mil, he does the Domi Athanasio contract, cool. Doesn't hurt anybody. Like, we, we, Take a little cap space, sign PK Subban, see what we can get in at the trade deadline. Cool. The only thing that kind of hurts, but I guess because I mean we have two guys we're planning to trade anyways, is you know the 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 ability to take on a bad contract at the right. deadline. That's the one. Th- that's that's something. Having the cap space to take on a bad contract, I think, is a, worth a lot more than than bringing in PK. Right just to make us worse. And we're saying that like, like he's immediately going to be bad. Like who knows? Maybe he well, that's figures the thing. something like, out. Yeah. You can, you get him on a deal that like, isn't like kind of shitty towards him. And it's fair enough that like teams would want to get, if he has like a decent season, which yes. I think is, I think that it would be fair at that Domi and Athanasio kind of price. We are like, at seven and a half million in cap space. Like, what are some comparable defensemen from last year to PK Subban? I, I don't know why I keep saying his name in different ways. I just like can't decide whether I want to say Subban or Subban. But comparables. Like, what did like who who had around the same like similar stats as him last year? Like, I have no idea. Where does he fall? as like a defensive ranking uh, it's it's crazy to me like the drop off from him too so he went from oh uh, you can't pull him it? up on that comparable thing because he doesn't have a contract oh really like uh, like I, I wouldn't hate it but i wouldn't love it so it don't doesn't really bother me <laughs> <laughs> do whatever yeah exactly uh <laughs> all right next question <laughs> Just yeah, I I feel like PK Subban should be playing somewhere. Like if it's with the Hawks, cool. Like that's fine. Like I don't know. You're thinking about other. Like I just don't think if he's going from making nine million, if he's going to come here on like a one to three million dollar deal. But like I don't know who's going to be paying more than that. Also, really don't know the mindset. Like you've heard his agent saying that he's just looking for the right opportunity. But like with his off ice like career, like you know social media and all that kind of stuff, it's like. Where's his motivation to play hockey still? It seemed right. like, yeah, it seemed like he was more worried. Unless he wants to go to, like, Toronto. Yeah. Like, come here, get get a little bit of a contract at, like, three mil, like I'm saying. Go to Toronto at 1.5 at the deadline. There you go. <laughs> all right. Here is the last of these are all anonymous. Um what would you change in the NHL to make it more appealing, appealing or improve the game? Damn. Um, That's the only really thinker of this, these questions. What the? Yeah. I saw one thing online before that was a really good idea. I don't. It was on Reddit. I don't. I honestly, I, I don't think I'll be able to find it again. Original six day. Yeah. Original six day. <laughs> where like, it, 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 I, I wish I could find out who said it. Um, but the idea was it's been going around having, for a while now. Yeah. Yeah. Just having, having a day where all the games that are played, it's just a, like three games that day. And it's Boston, the Rangers, Toronto against Montreal, and then Detroit versus Chicago. I mean, you know, that, you know, that would, yeah, that would, that would be sick. But like also, <laughs> if you just have them wear like classic jerseys too, like that'd be, that'd be awesome. I mean, I don't know, dude. Like, soft you... cap, soft salary cap. 
soft salary cap, sure. Does that make the game better? I don't know. I think, that kind of puts a, a distance between a lot or a, a more of a distance between teams when you get teams like Toronto that's like made of money in Montreal, just flood flooded with fucking good players. Everybody's making 11.5. <laughs> but you still got to take into account too that they're paying up like with a soft cap, they would still be have to pay a fine that would get distributed yeah, to, the, to the lower salary teams to give them more money too. Okay. Just no, I'm just, I'm just saying I don't know if that changes anything. You still all. have to you still have to attract players to those places. Fine. Okay. Right. I I was just throwing it out there. Just just, just eat it, passing over if you want to toss it back and we'll put it away. That's fine. Let's toss it. Let's yeah. toss it. But like I don't know, man. Like like what do you what would you change? Get rid of the trapezoid. <laughs> Get rid of the trapezoid. Like goalies play the puck. Get rid um, of the red lines. I, I, I mean, one thing would make it better is change the way points are distributed. Three points for a win. That's us. Yeah, that. Two points for an OT win. One point for an OT loss or whatever. No points for a regulation loss. Um, I also think overtime should change. Should be twenty minute three on three. You know, five start at five, three on three. No one scores. Goes to ten. Three on three. No one scores up to 20. You just add time. Yeah. <laughs> add so time. Un- and then, unlimited set, sudden death. And then, no. So you add time and then you, you allow, shorten the bench. We you just shorten go, the bench. We, we go Wayne Gretzky 3D hockey. It's oh. sudden death. First team to score wins. Cross checking is allowed and you're allowed <laughs> to hit the goalie. But no, I'm serious. <laughs> or you do one, or you do one 20 minute overtime, but like a shootout. You have to assign only certain players that are allowed to play, so you shorten the bench. They already shorten the bench anyway. But I'm saying though, like, but even if say something gets happened, like, oh, this person was out there for five minutes, we'll grab somebody off the bench. You can only pick six skaters, and only those six skaters can play overtime. Maybe, <laughs> like you have designated overtime players. Basically, whatever it's going to take. I don't be, know. That yeah, doesn't make it. Like, whatever it's going to take to get rid of like, shootouts. Like casual fans like the shootout. And that's the worst fucking thing. I think it's hilarious. I fucking I think it. it's kind of cool, man. Like, I know that Kaner is, like, always always exciting to watch in the shootout. There's guys that are, like, thrive in the shootout, which are really fun to watch. I'm I just... guess it's, it sucks when you're a team like Vegas and you go fucking 0-17. <laughs> <laughs> and, your te- and your fucking season's on the line. I just I'm team like I don't think a game should be determined by a skills competition. I just I th- I think it should be figured I mean, out. I a way is to finish a skills it. Skills competition, really. But there's a difference between showing the skill during a, what what do you have during a game versus a, something that's in the skills competition portion of the All Star Weekend. Yeah, I don't. Know. Have a have a sauce competition or like fucking get the ring, get the rings and the targets out and like <laughs> <laughs> see who can nail the five targets the fastest on the team. You choose two players and you average the times. I don't know. Might as well just you shoot the puck like they do between intermission. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's how you decide the game winner. Get Kaner in the fucking stands and start saucing pucks at at the ice for points. Win every time. Yeah. Um, all right. Favorite player on the team you hate the most, current or former? Fuck. Mine would probably be Datsuk. Yeah. I don't even know if I hate Detroit the most anymore. But I mean, at one when I when I was a fan of Datsuk, I fucking hated Detroit. And I hated that he played for Detroit because I was never able to get his jersey. I refused to get his jersey because of that. Tarasenko. Like, it's hard to hate Tarasenko. He's so good, but I fucking hate playing against him. Uh, Brandon Saad, I think that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon Saad on whatever team he goes, basically. Yeah. I mean, he's on St. Louis right now, so. I guess, oh, I don't know, Phil Kessel. Oh, yeah, he's on Vegas. Fuck Vegas. <laughs> yeah, Kessel. That's a good one, too. There's three so, teams yeah, that I'd he say Datsu, go to. Datsu, Saad, Kessel. Any goalies? Ashik. You hated Buffalo? Detroit. Oh, yeah, I guess. You, you literally said, though, I don't know if I hate Detroit. Yeah, but, like, at the time. Okay. 
you know, that's what we're saying. Like at the All time, right. I, didn't, I didn't like Detroit, and Datsuk was nasty. And just, fuck, man, he's so good. Yeah. I, I don't know. I kind of more respect Detroit still, and like love the rivalry. Whereas, like, I I hate St. Louis. Like, fuck St. Louis. It's a different hate for sure. Yeah, oh, definitely yeah. A different hate. All right, last question, and we'll wrap this up. Uh, and I thought this one was just funny because of our old lake winter lake trips. Uh, what would be your goal song? Oh, fuck. But it, I had Hotline Bling. Yeah, then you. <laughs> the fucking, I fucking hated that. <laughs> what would be my goal song? Fuck. Um, what is it? Out for a rip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you always but, had good uh, ones. You always had good ones. Uh yeah, I think that song's hilarious. I had I had uh that by by Shark Tank. <laughs> Shark Tank. Um, Do you still have Shark Tank? Oh, that's hilarious. I don't know, man. I feel like uh, I I feel like it would change all the time. I don't have any cool anything cool like Patty Kane would have like Rock Me Like a Hurricane or Rock yeah. Me Like a Hurricane. Like what would I don't know? I'm trying to think what I had at the like I've had Ninja Rap by Vanilla Ice. <laughs> I think I had Bombshell by Power Man one here. Oh Jesus! Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, that's our answer. We don't know. Definitely won't be Chelsea Dagger. That's for damn sure. No, definitely not. <laughs> but all right, Tanner, you got anything else? No, man. All right, episode 190. What do you want to call it? Uh, the lull episode. The lull. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So, with that being said, next. Or, you, or we can have it be the doctor's, the doctor signs his papers. <laughs> no, that's, that's so fucking. That's fucking great. The doctor's note. <laughs> <laughs> the doc is in. Yeah. Now, I mean, I feel like that's something we had before, but whatever. yeah, um, yeah. So with that being said, with the season just around the corner, training camp starting, we kind of are going to take our time pre- getting a little preview for the season. So each week from here until opening night, we're going to be previewing a division. Um, I don't know if we established the order just yet. Um, Probably then, Eastern Conference first. <laughs> yeah, it'll just go Eastern Conference, and then the last two will be Western Conference. Then the week of opening night, we will do a Chicago Blackhawks preview along with our season predictions and hot takes and all that good stuff. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned for that. Um, I think we're super – we've been super excited about the season. We've been kind of talking a little bit about those episodes going forward and just getting us so jacked up for this year. I think – with the Hawks being so bad, it's going to be a lot of fun to kind of watch more hockey and kind of like, it's like just kind of get a better grip on the entire league on top of this, on top of the Hawks. Um, I know we got a lot of stuff, cool stuff planned that we want to do this year. So i um, super looking forward to it. Uh, so yeah, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, on Spotify, on Apple podcasts, five star reviews on Apple podcasts and Spotify. Um, make sure to follow the social medias at WCB podcast, um, the hockey or the windy city betters podcast on Facebook like that. Um, and then, Hey, check out, check me out now on hockey buzz. I'm uh, officially the Chicago Blackhawks blogger for the website. So I will start doing some cool shit on there too. Um, yeah, other than that, I got nothing. All right. Yeah. All right. So for, uh, for Jeremy Tanner, we will see you next week. All right. Love you boys. Bye. The Windy City Benders Podcast. Subscribe to the show on Apple Podcast, Spotify, and YouTube. And follow the boys on socials at WCB Podcast.